actually going to read a poem, strangely enough, about people walking into, basically about people who come into your life. Um, it's kind of about being vulnerable. And uh, today I actually found out that a good friend of mine just went into rehab. Um, and funny story about that, just to share, like that this is one of the people who was written about, like, who was written about, she's like, oh yeah, so when you, since the two months, the three months that you've been gone, um, I started doing heroin again. And uh, I've also moved up to crack. Um, and I was prostituting myself. <laughs> and then she goes, and then I kept going, she's like, all I have is that I've never done meth. And then they were like, you tested positive for methamphetamines. And she's like, fuck, now I have nothing. Because that was the biggest accomplishment she had was not doing meth. Um, so yeah, that's just about the people that this is kind of going towards. And now my phone has a lot because I have it. Okay, all right, I'm ready now. You know, for once, I just like to sleep with my doors unlocked. There was a time when I would just let any guest in my domain come in from the cold with dirty shoes and destroy my nice, clean floors. And when they would leave, which they would always leave, I'd get back on my hands and knees and scrub in soft circles until my knuckles bled. Using my tears to lather soaps made of sympathy, rubbing in soft, <laughs> rubbing in soft circles so I did not destroy the, the hardwood. See, because for a time I could see myself in the shoes of my guests, walking haphazardly through rain, sleet, and snow while stepping on every dirty situation they came across to find themselves unable to move with souls so covered in disaster they could no longer grip solid ground. And that's when they would enter, walking throughout the halls of my space, and I would, and, uh, walking through the halls of my space, I have to live in tracking all the muck they've gained in travels, telling me how they couldn't stand how dirty their shoes were but never once gave a mention to cleaning them. And when their souls were cleansed on my clean floors, they suddenly had somewhere better to be, somewhere else to walk, somewhere where the shoes got the, where the floors got their shoes even dirtier. But no one in those houses bothered to walk barefoot. So it really didn't matter. So I started locking my doors and I installed the doorbell. And every time the bell would ring, I was I started patiently and patiently waiting to see if this might be someone who would stay, if it could be someone I could get to at least take their shoes off. And sure enough, I eagerly rushed to the door and opened and I'll find more of the same people with dirty shoes. And without hesitation, I invite them in because I know it's cold outside. And even if I put locks on my door, that wouldn't stop me from letting out the ones that rang. And sure enough, every visit, and sure enough, after every visit, they left my floors dirty. So I removed the doorbell, and I put so many bolts on the locks that no one would enter without my forethought. And again, the cold comes. And this time, they come knocking. And again, I will let them in. I would have to, <laughs> ah. I would have dirty floors, and again, they would leave. I would, I would have to relock my door, saying to myself that this would be the last time I would let anyone else in. Until one day I found myself scrambling to unlock doors to more of the unrelenting cold, and no one on the other side. That's when I realized my house had only been worn by the problematic pacing of those strangers with dirty shoes. Yes, for once, I'd like to sleep with my doors unlocked, but who would clean up the mess made by the problematic pacing of strangers who walks right in, leaving my floors in disarray, and never even acknowledging they were ever here. Yay. Finish. <laughs> Next time, I want to come prepared, because you're obviously, you're going to like probably pressure me to, yep, yep that's what's going to happen. This one's called Potential for Allies. It has a name. Yay. Um, and when I was really feeling it, I remember asking questions on the slide, like, when we're 40, how old will our kids be? Your eyes marching in cadence to the beating of my broken heart, but your lips would not be soldiers of good intention. They forsake their homeland, flag burning rebels questioning leadership of a fearful dictator. Yes, I have assumed you live unreconciled with yourself. This is a betrayal of your tongue that signs peace treaties with my body and ambassador to your soul, making way for safe travels for its citizens of secrets. And my proudly privileged, virtually virtuous, take pity in what they perceive to be poverty, so we wage war against ourselves to teach one another a lesson. I sit planning and patient occupations of the world's leading to your resources. I invade villages set up by your insecurities, hunting down anything I see fit to be a threat to my well-being, and I will use it against you. I pr promote internal propaganda saying that it was for the good of my foundation and the events that will lead to the building of yours. I believe my lies. If you can tell yourself that we cannot be allies allocating resources and synchronicity, creating an axis of power, then I will destroy you. And I will not apologize for what I've damaged. For you started this. When you came to me for aid, I provided you with weapons to fight through life. And in my misguided attempts to calm your fears, I made you a menace. You used what I gave, you used what I gave you against me. All inside me live in terror of every new ambassador and of every new potential ally.